Hi, I thought I would show what I know so far about working with cold wax medium. I've only been using it for like a month, um, but one of my friends, hi Beth, um, asked me to make a video, so I'm gonna do it. I'm far from an expert, and um, if you want to learn from people who know what they're doing, <laughs> then I will, uh, I will post some links um, because I'm definitely learning from others. Um, so I'm working on these whiteboards and I have oil paper, um, the arches oil paper. I don't know how you pronounce it. It's like H-U-I-L-E and I guess means oil in French. Um, and I love working on taped down paper because it, uh, you know, it leaves that nice frame around it. Um, and one of the things that is frustrating about working with cold wax medium is you have to let layers dry. So I'm working, I have a whole bunch of these whiteboards. And um, I have like eight of them that are this size, and then I have four that are larger. Um, so I can just work on a whole bunch at once. So I started some yesterday, and what I'm trying to do is pay more attention to value. I'm, I don't really know where I'm going right now artistically. Like sometimes I feel great doing stuff that's abstract, and then other times I just, I really have a strong urge to um, put something representational. So I'm just kind of going with that. So yesterday, um, I, uh, I was just kind of messing around. And like I said, I'm like, I've, I've been trying to work with a limited palette. Um, so I did this one. Um, I have, these are still wet, so I have to keep them spread out. Um, and then I did this one. And I was trying out some different techniques. So, for example, this one I was using um, a stencil, I used the scraper, um, I think that's all I see in this one, and the one I showed before, I used a scraper and like some hard scribbling with a pencil. Um, and then there is this one. This one, I used a roller. Um, it looks like there's some scraper in there as well. And I also went over it with the white paint stick. Um, and like I said, this is just the first layer. Like you really have to work in multiple layers with this. And then there's this one, which is just really hideous. <laughs> um, I, I went over this one with a black paint stick and ugh. It just looks really gross. Um, so I think scraper, paint stick, maybe some roller. Oh, and then another thing that I think I did in many of these was um, to use uh, crumpled up tissue paper and I just kind of pressed it on there. I wrinkled it, crinkled it at first and pressed it on there. So anyway, I'm, but, but these are all things I'm gonna show. Um, but first I wanna see, so this is still pretty wet, so I can't really, work on this right now. Some parts are dry, um, but this is still pretty wet. Um, I'm not in love with it, so I, I think I'll just keep going. Um, and like I said, I am trying to practice paying attention to value. Um, so, and I totally forgot to clean my tools off. So this is, this is, paint from yesterday and it's still totally wet. All right, so um, here is some oil paint and uh, this is cold wax and it comes in a jar, I mean a can. Um, and it's kind of weird looking. It's really like, like fluffy. Um, and 
and I made my own. <laughs> yes, I did. I made my own and it is not nearly as nice looking. And of course I left it open. So this looks like, like failed frosting, but um, I think it's okay. So um, I'm, you put about equal amounts of cold wax medium with the paint. Um, and then you mix it up. So like one of the things I noticed about this is it ha it's like really chunky, um, but it seems like when I mix it, I'm able to kind of mush those out. So um, even though it's like weird, probably if I had like uh, one of those stick blenders and I made a big batch of this, I could just like blend it up. But yeah, see it gets, it smooths out. I was a little worried about it. It's really cool to make it. Like you melt, it only has three ingredients, um, beeswax and some kind of solvent. Um, I used a solvent that I got from the pigment place because uh, I, I want to make my own paints, which I haven't started doing yet. And um, a resin, and I used galkid, galkide. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, and then, so you melt the wax and you and you mix the two liquids together, and then you combine them. And it's kind of like like the like the wax is all clear when it's melted, and then you you pour it into the liquid, and it just like instantly solidifies. Um, and so I don't know, it was kind of interesting, but I, I don't know. We'll see. We will see. Okay. So, all right. So that looks pretty good. Um, and I'm going to make up some white as well. I'm using titanium white. I can't remember what the difference is between zinc and titanium, but I, I think titanium is a little bit more transparent um, or semi-transparent. Um, uh, one thing I have learned is that the metal palette knives are really necessary. Like I have these like cheap ones that I got at Michael's and um, they're just kind of, they just don't have enough strength, I guess. They're too, they're too squishy and they, and they don't mush very well. Okay. So I, I don't know what I'm doing, but there's a couple of, there's so many techniques you can use. And so in these early layers, the goal is to make texture and to kind of, and to kind of just focus on, on, on under layers, you know, cause, cause later things kind of show up. So, um, I really, I really hate this black. So I'm just gonna bring this in here and I'm, I'm just scraping it over really lightly. And I'm going to use this one to get this hideousness. Um, and like you can, you know, put, put texture in. This is one of my favorite textures is just kind of tapping the palette knife. It leaves, I like the texture that it leaves. All right, and so there's um, like, you know, kind of not scraping, but kind of like wiping, I guess, with the palette knife, and then um, that kind of tapping action, and then um, you can crumple up a piece of tissue paper and you can use a roller. So this is pretty thick in here, so you wanna avoid really thick 
because it will just take forever to dry. So I'm just rolling this on here and then removing it and it takes off some of the paint and then you can just put it somewhere else and roll it to transfer it. And, um, and it leaves pretty nice textures. Let me do that again because it's kind of shaped like a roller. Um, and so it's quite messy. <laughs> um, what else? So value, I don't know. How are you supposed to know when, I guess contrast, value, I don't know. It's something you're supposed to pay more attention to in abstract art. Also use scrapers. So, these are nice for blending. And you can also use rollers. These tend to work better a little bit later on. Um, if you use them on wet paint, they'll just kind of lift it off. And, and I, I like what rollers leave, but they also like leave that edge that I'm not crazy about. Okay, let's see. So there's a little too much paint on there, so I'm gonna All right, that looks terrible. That's okay, because it will just get covered up later. Um, you can also, I have, I'm gonna try something for the first time, which is using something like this to get like a straight edge. I don't know, let's see. I'm, I'm just making this up. I have no idea if this is gonna work. <laughs> I got this at the dollar store. Oh, that's kind of interesting. So, sort of hard to see, but there's a subtle edge in there. And at this stage, like the, uh, most of this is going to get covered up. So it's just about like having fun and not really worrying about trying to do anything and just, just, just have fun. All right, so texture, I mean, uh, contrast. So I have, I have my whitest white and I have my darkest dark and I have some mid-tones in there. So this is looking a lot better. There's still this flaw thing. So maybe I'll, let me try some, a stencil over that or a stamp. I'll try a stamp. So oh, this is just uh, like a deer hoof, little block print, um, and I'll just, I'm, I'm not using it to try to get anything recognizable, just get some new kind of texture in there and cover up that. So one of the things that I struggle with is really high contrast. Texture, like in here, I really like um, like the more subtle values. And then in here, like it just looks kind of messy. And I'm not crazy about it, but I'm going to, I'm just going to leave it. Um, what else can you do? So, I mean, there's lots else that you can do, but um, there's not as much that I'm trying to limit what I'm, what I'm doing right now. But you can, um, you can put like scratch marks in. And it will scratch down to the layer below. 
Um, so like I could just totally scrape this off and get another layer. Ugh, I brought back that ugly thing. It's okay. And now I have something on the edge here that maybe will be really gross, but maybe will be interesting. Um, I think it's good to try to use, use things in more than one place, but use them differently. So it doesn't, you don't have too much, um, too much variety. I don't like that mark. Um, so I have this like really smooth thing here. It looks really blended. My chair is making a really awful squeaking noise. It sounds like I'm tooting, but I'm not. No, I don't really like that really straight edge very much. Oops. <laughs> I just got oil paint all over my shirt. Okay, so I think I'll leave that one and move on to something else like that was the one that i thought just looked the worst and it's still it's still not great um and i don't really know what i'm doing but um that's okay i'm just building up layers and building up texture so after after this dries and sets up i can unify it um, a little bit with some glazing or some other techniques that um, I will have to sh show in another video because um, this is going to need to dry over the weekend, I think. All right, let's do this one. Um, so I'm going to grab... Grab the oil stick and um, and draw with that. So if you've never used oil sticks before, they're kind of like giant pastels, but they get like a dry spot on them that you have to move off. Um, so this paint is still pretty wet, but some of this uh, texture I really don't like. Um, yeah, this is still pretty wet. So I'm going to try something called Veil of Color. So this is just deli paper from Smart and Final. And I'm just going to Use a roller and roll on here. So, and you can kind of see like, like using a roller has really, makes really nice marks. Um, so there's a couple of things I can do with this. So I can, um, I can like, you know, make marks with it and it will transfer them. Or I can roll on there to transfer a, a larger shape. Um, and it's not working great right now because it's kind of lifting off as much paint as it's putting down. So, but these then can be used for collage and they, they're, they're kind of nice. They have really nice textures. So I, I save a lot of these and then use them a little bit later. All right, let's see. So. Hmm. Um, I'm trying to think about contrast. So I don't really have any super dark darks, and I, I'm not. I kind of want to unify this. 
So I'm just going to cover that. I don't like static when it's, I don't like really high contrast staticky looking stuff. And I feel like I go through a lot of paint. <laughs> Maybe my layers are supposed to be a lot thinner. All right, let me, let me see what I can do here. So I think what's going to happen is because this isn't dry, it's it's not really going to lay anything down. Well, I guess it will. Um, but it will also pick stuff up. You can use stencils too. Which can leave interesting textures that I usually end up getting rid of because they just look too stencily, but it's a starting point. All right, I'm, I'm going to end this because I think you get the idea and my phone keeps ringing. <laughs> um, so I'll make another video uh, after these have dried and go over like a third layer. So I'm adding a second layer, just kind of improving the contrast. Um, and then I will make a third layer.